Okay, YouTubers, and a special thanks to Tajam on this one. You know, I do have some assistance from time to time, and there is no one better than Shazam, period, end of story, in my opinion. Of all the people I've had the pleasure of working with in the anti-nuke business, I would hands down say Shazam's, you know, the most informative, knowledgeable, and just all-around incredible researcher. You guys just don't understand it. It would take me too long to explain what you got to do to go through some of these files to find these documents pertaining to Fukushima because they have all sort of tricks I didn't even list. I forgot the other day on my article of subversion and what have you. I forgot to list how they can hide FOIA documents and folders from years ago and say, oops, we made a mistake. So they can they can know one with critical information they don't want us to have and bury it back in some other folder and say, oops, we made a mistake, right? Convenient. Nevertheless, good luck hiding it from Shazam because he will find it. Okay, let me read this to you right here. This is, again, this just bolsters our case and concretes our case that they knew early on exactly how severe it was and no one issued rainwater warnings here, green leafy vegetable warnings. They raised the radiation threshold and so they did everything wrong. They suppressed the information, they raised the threshold, and they didn't do any kind of warnings whatsoever. Now a lot of people's getting sick. So I just want to read this to you to uh, help concrete our case that they knew early on that it was a quote-unquote worst case. And this is from Monday, March 14, from Tom Andrews, and it's sent to Rick Hasselberg, subject, Japan. He says, sure was a lot of conflicting and misleading information coming out of Japan on the status of these sites. Sad to say, but this sounds like one of those quote-unquote worst-case scenarios we have practiced for years. Parentheses, prolonged station blackout. Remember saying how much redundancy we have to prevent this from happening? Wonder what knee-jerk regulatory reactions will evolve from this. Wonder if this will make it too expensive for some of the plants to operate due to the cost of required modifications. Knowing how bad the situation is in Japan and trying to make the best out of a bad situation, are we getting any data from Japan that we can use later for training? Do we know who was dispatched to Japan from the NRC? So the important part of this to concentrate on is clearly by March 14th, there were a lot of people that knew it was a worst case scenario. And I've showed you where they ran plenty of worst case scenarios. They wanted to pick the least worst case so they don't have to move Navy ships. Now our sailors are sick. TEPCO is the scapegoat, but I tell you right now, they're only part of the problem. Navy's a problem, DOD's a problem, NRC, DOE, CDC, HHS, USED, White House, Bechtel, GE, IAEA, WHO, FEMA, DHS. FEMA was told to stand down. DHS doesn't do a lot of homeland security if they just let us get battered by the plume and fall out and try to do their best to hide it from us. If I was president today, I would shut... FEMA down. I would shut DHS down. I would say if you can't protect the American public from you know a radioactive plume and cloud, if you can't issue warnings, if you can't do your job, well, we don't need you. We don't. I would rather hire just public American citizens randomly drawn from a, a lottery of some type and, and build a new FEMA out of that. Just random citizens build a new FEMA. You'd do much better. I'd rather publicly draw from a lottery random citizens to, and replace all of DHS. In fact, this may be what we come to one day. I'm not going to get off on a tangent here, but that is a possibility how we arrest these people and have them replaced, right? A random lottery drawing, it won't. It cannot be any worse than it is now. I mean, can it get worse than someone letting this radioactive plume and cloud from a four melt core through the floor and the resulting source term, not even a rainwater warning for pregnant women? Folks, you guys got to understand, this is beyond evil. This is beyond evil, folks. Because you give some kind of warning, the, the humanity, right? The humanity. And this one I'm going to feature in my new article that's going up today because, again, this bolsters our case that by March 14th, they're all talking about this worst case. They're all talking about prolonged station blackout. And he says, remember saying how much redundancy we have to prevent this from happening? Okay. Hold on a second. Let me jump to a, let's see, here's another nice little thing from Shazam. And he says this. So NRC just issued another quote-unquote order. To all those Fukushima-style reactor operators in the U.S., that'd be the Mark I systems, to put two vent systems on each of these unreliable containment systems. Since opening up the containment for Fukushima, Daiichi Units 1, 2, and 3 didn't work out so well, NRC wants to make sure that the power companies can defeat the bogus system before it blows up. 
Quote, the NRC finds that the public health, safety, and interests require that this order be made immediately effective. End quote. Right. Ready for the punchline? Exelon, Entergy, and other Mark I and Mark II nuke waste factory operators don't have the vents installed until June 30, 2018 and June 30, 2019. And folks, real quickly as I sum this up, they've known about this hard vent thing on the Mark I since the 70s. Since the 70s. See how slow they are to do anything? They're, they're in no hurry. This, this industry has failed. This industry has failed. That's all I can say. Patrick Henry, over and out. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.